Hello, this is Pitharian's Flame, and welcome to my fourth Haskell tutorial. Um, now, several of you complained that uh, you couldn't see the text on my terminal, so um, thanks for pointing that out. I didn't realize it was so small. Uh, hopefully that will be better. Um, so last tutorial we went over uh, functions and operators, and operator sections, and lambdas, and a bunch of related stuff. What you may not realize is that operator sections, if, which if you recall means you can apply an operator to one, um, to one of its parameters on either side and get a function, an, an anonymous uh, closure, that will uh, take a single argument and apply it essentially on the other side and then get the, the final result. That's a specific case of a more general effect in Haskell called partial application. But when you say the word partial application, most people who know Haskell think in, or sorry, prefix functions. When you mean infix partial application, you usually just say section or operator section, because that's what it is. Also of note is that the parentheses syntax, like this, for making an operator section, so like this is a that's 7 times 8. Another way to write that is that's exactly the same thing, right? This is the syntax right here for making an operator prefix. This is a special case of an operator section. Um, now, in order to do partial application on prefix functions, it's actually really easy. So let's let me, let me define a function here. Let f x, y equal x plus y. It's a class of for me. Uh, let, um, you know what, f, obviously it tells me it can't print it, but I can look at the type of f, right? Um, and that's as expected. Uh, for all for all uh, values of type A, where A must belong to num, where A must be a number, uh, F can take two values of A and um, uh, produce another value of A. So, um, and we have F and 7 and 8, and we get 15, as expected. And we can look at the type of F, 7, 8, and it's a, where A is some number. We can also do F7. And obviously I can't print it, but if I look at its type, I have a function from A to A where A must be a number. So I'm going to assign that to a name, let G equal F7. And now I can apply it to 8, and I get 15. So, you see, I've done exactly the same thing. I've essentially taken a section, I've partially applied this function. And this doesn't just work on functions of two parameters, it works on functions of any per number of parameters in Haskell. In fact, this is such a pervasive method that, technically speaking, Haskell functions only ever take one parameter. Um, and this goes back to lambda expressions, so we say let f x y equal x plus y. Well, we can, sorry, x plus y. We can refactor that, right? We can make it a lambda expression. Let f x equal, sorry, let f equal lambda x y. So, you know, this is the same thing. It's just writing it with an explicit lambda expression and assigning the lambda to the f. So, lambda x y to x plus y. What you may not realize is that this is itself syntactic sugar for that, or with parentheses added to make sure that um, we know where the implicit grouping is, that. Um, this is called currying. All functions in Haskell are curried automatically. This is exactly the same as just writing this, which is exactly the same as just writing this, 
which is the same as that, but you know, parentheses. Um, so, partial application is due to currying. Currying is the, the sort of general process of taking a function of n arguments and making it a function of one argument that when supplied with one parameter produces another function that when supplied with the next parameter produces another function then eventually once you've continuously supplied all the parameters you'll get back the final value rather than yet another function. In fact, um, in theory it's perfectly possible to have a curried uh, infinite arity function. Haskell doesn't allow that because for one thing, it would be perfectly useless, um, except under sort of weird trickery circumstances. And two, uh, it would cause an infinite loop in the type checker. Although, you can fake it by using new types. I will get to that later. Um, you don't know enough yet to understand new types without me going into a long explanation. But um, I guess that's that for now. I wanted to point out partial application um, and currying. So this concludes uh, sort of the really basic part of Haskell. Um, next we'll be taking a look at um, some standard library functions and types. So the absolute next tutorial will be on the type system. Um, but uh, after that, we'll be looking at some, some common library functions, and um, then we'll start to get into sort of beginner intermediate stuff. So, uh, this has been Tharian's Flame with my fourth Haskell tutorial, uh, Functions Part 2, and happy Haskelling!